Teresa, you did a recent book that you actually had last uh, December in Las Vegas. I want you to tell us the title of the book and what you consider now since you published this last year and you've had a huge response across the country uh, of your book. What do you think now, considering the new revelations? And we did a 45-minute video on our live stream channel for all those people that want to get our live stream membership. Two video clips, actually, uh, almost over an hour and, uh, plus with Chris Harris reviewing some of the major documents and PDFs from not only the San Onofre and the power blackout here in Southern California, but a major review uh, by the NRC of the Fukushima disaster, and it's a lot worse than even I thought. Well, there's a scary thought, Bill. The yeah. name of my book is America's Chernobyl, Millions Will Die. I Tell titled about- it that because it's from Chernobyl, 1.5 million people passed away, depending on how you count them, either directly or indirectly. And Chernobyl was only a month old, was one nuclear reactor. Fukushima was six reactors, was 40 years old, and it has 1,565 fuel rods in one, in one fuel pond alone. Right. Affect, so the, uh, the entire the, world. The amount of fuel that I think that they estimate is somewhere around 36 times more fuel on the site than Chernobyl. Chernobyl also blew the fuel rods and material apart, so they decreased criticality. So there was one massive blast because of mismanagement of the plant. What's going on in Fukushima is unique. It's not ever been seen before on Three Mile Island or even the Rockadine facility up in California, Northern California. What's happening in Fukushima is the first real cataclysmic corium related transient uh, criticality event because you see neutron beams are coming off this shooting or 20 30 miles out into space you can see a blue light in the evening or or sundown because it's causing nitrogen to generate blue lights it's generating hydrothermal and hydrovolcanic explosions because it's creating tritium and superheated steam it is literally increasing a cauldron of slow neutrons that's going to increase the risk of an actual nuclear explosion and will probably be more than one or more over a period of many years or even centuries of not only hydrothermal explosions but actual critical nuclear explosions that will vent off massive amounts of radiation from the site that will circulate the planet and make most of northern Japan not only uninhabitable but will salt the entire world with radiation. Yes, it it will salt the entire earth with radiation. Thank you for that in-depth explanation, Bill. When I wrote the book I knew that the radiation plumes would come towards America, and I was concerned for my fellow Americans. And what I've learned since then, of course, is most people think the problem's over in Japan and not here. There's been a slow awakening to that. uh, Tracy, did you see the article by, uh, 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 I think uh, her name is Consolo. She wrote, uh, she has a thing called Nuke Radio. And um, she tries to follow this and report in her latest article talks about how Fukushima is literally falling apart. The latest is, we talked about this yesterday, Ambassador Morata from Japan has asked the United Nations to intervene now. This is a little late. This is over a year now. And we're seeing a oh, yeah, disaster where the, the if cooling pool number four falls, and again, remember, cooling pool three had the MOX reactor uh, pellets, which right. contain a lot of plutonium. Uh, they know that this is going to go critical and will cause a hydrothermal and nuclear explosion, which I'm going to estimate is going to be in the range of two kilotons. A two yes, kiloton I understand explosion. it's equal to, to 800 atomic bombs. Right. No, I'm talking about it'll be dirty, so it won't be a full big. If it was a full nuclear explosion, just the cooling pool number four, it's estimated that if you take 10 to 12 uh, pounds of radioactive isotope material to make a nuclear weapon, you would you would just from cooling pool four make 93,000 nuclear bombs, 93,000. Now, I want to hear now from our expert, John Moore. John, when you hear these kind of numbers and you hear them scrambling around, moving troops, bringing Russian troops to America, seeing lots of other things going on, and the EPA are doing nothing, what do you think? Can't hear you very well, John. We'll try to reconnect with John. What do you think, Anne, when you hear these kind of things and you know the, you're the radiation expert, what do you think is happening and how likely is it that we are going to have a civil disaster in Japan? They're now talking openly about 40 million people evacuated from, from Tokyo and northern Japan. They're now openly talking about the fact that, that 4% of babies now in northern Japan have actually had brain damage since um, May, March 11th last year. 
that 28 percent of all pregnancies are spontaneously miscarrying in the uh, prefectures in, around Tokyo and northern Japan. Uh, they're talking about foods that are hundreds of miles away, is heavily uh, level, laden with cesium-137, uh, <clears throat> uh, strontium-90, and radioiodine-131, and that it's, uh, they've detected plutonium in Eastern Europe after the March of the January 1 superquake that hit uh, northern Japan and caused a massive release of radiation in the midst of winter that actually was not detected in the West because our sciences are so corrupt. The EPA across Canada and across Western Europe, it was only the Eastern Europeans that reported it. That is bad. Well, yes, and yeah. so in your comments. Well, um, I think that uh, I want to I mention that the union workers are voting on a possible strike at the Pilgrim nuclear power plant. And, uh, you know, that's something else that we're going to have to uh, consider. You know, we're having these Occupy Wall Street and the um, Tea Party and uh, May Day and uh, the unions. And, you know, if the, if the workers strike at the nuclear plants, you, we know that San Onofre is down, and it may be down for the summer. It may be well, down okay. completely. I think down permanently. We talked about this extensively yesterday. Uh, one of the things that I do is... I research things thoroughly and then I pray on something. And what I got in both my, when my intellect and my prayer says the same thing, that there was a defect in the tubes, which I got last year when we had the blackout and the massive release of radiation because I had my Inspector Plus sitting on Michelle, my wife's dresser in our bedroom, and it spiked to four times background radiation for three to five days after San Onofre had this hot shutdown. Now we have the final report, which went over yesterday on live stream. And we know there was a defect in the tube design. They did what's called like-for-like like switching of these tubes and added many more of these uh, steam turbine tubes. There's a defect in how it's attached to what's called the, uh, the plate below it. And so there was leaking tritium all along and other radioisotopes. But when they had a hot shutdown, the whole reactor burned. Most of these tubes burned out large amounts of them, making it not only a radiation hazard, but also very dangerous. In other words, it wouldn't work properly as a steam turbine. This is it with all these reactors. Mark I reactors have a problem with the engineering design, which we went over yesterday from the NRC. 25 of our 104 reactors in America are Mark I. All the reactors in Japan at the Fukushima Daiichi plant, because they're old, are all Mark I, General Electric. They re-engineered them with a faux release system for hydrogen. This is a toxic waste dump that should have had a corium catcher built, a uh, spider silk tent, over each facility and over the entire facility, a literally a moat built around it in the seawall, nothing's been done. This is a hazardous waste dump that's going to, and is poisoning the entire world. People say, well, I can't see it or taste it. I can't see it or taste it, that's killing me. No. The jaws of the Fukushima Zilla monster are wide open, biting you and your DNA right now, and you just don't know it. <clears throat> and there are solutions. We have them at Nutrimeds or Radiation protocol is available, but you better take action now because it's going to get a lot worse. And the radiation issue is dealing with many different areas. We have uh, with Dr. Pantanel's book. I want you to to say the primary points that you mentioned in your book, uh, Teresa. But this radiation issue has been downplayed. Even I remember in the newsletter by Joel Skousen, who's usually 99% about geopolitical, financial, and other issues. He literally totally dissed the whole idea that that San Onofre is a problem or that the Fukushima is going to be a problem or produce isn't radioactive, they forget the thing is the solution to pollution is not dilution. That <laughs> it bioaccumulates and that one atom, one atom of plutonium embedded in your liver, your kidney, your brain is a death sentence. You just don't know when it's going to be chiseled on your gravestone. So people need to grasp this. Radioiodine causes birth defects and spontaneous miscarriages. It's going to cause cancer is the last of the diseases you get. When you get radiation exposure, you get dementia, heart disease, uh, fertility, uh, drops in IQ, you get cardiac arrhythmias, hypertension, you get all kinds of other illnesses, diabetes, long, long before cancer is if you survive those, if you survive those. So after Chernobyl, most of the people died of these other illnesses. They didn't live long enough to get cancer, did they, Ter Teresa? No, no, they certainly didn't. They had strange illnesses with their kidneys. They yeah. had respiratory illnesses. 
Uh, in Tokyo, they're experiencing things like uh, unexplained bleeding dis disorders, people showing up in the hospital with unexplained symptoms, uh, loss of teeth, loss of hair. Well, what they're getting is they're losing, there's four classes of rapidly producing cells in your body. The crypt cells, which are in your small bowel because your bowel renews your cells every four days. The uh, bone marrow cells in your bowel, cells in your body that are basically we call the, the primary cells that generate your platelets, which uh, prevent clotting problems, uh, and all the blood cells, the hematopoietic cells that make red cells, white cells, lymphocytes. And then the next is the neuroglial cells in your brain that rapidly are reproducing, uh, that protect your brain and actually stop it from being damaged. And the, and the fourth uh, group of cells uh, are the cells in... Uh, your sex organs, for example, males, it's a sperm. It's, it's, so these are affected very, very quickly. Germ cell line cells are very, very affected. The problem is people don't realize that these have very quick consequences. And the Japanese were very good to, to document what happened after uh, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. And those who took things like miso soup and uh, nori and other things that were non-radioactive from other parts of Japan and, and took things that were radioprotectants, they survived. It, the key is not whether you're exposed to radiation, it's whether you can make cells to replace the ones that are damaged or going to die. The key is right. not that Fukushima had happened, it's are you going to take radiopharmaceuticals like our first line of defense kit, uh, our radiation protection protocol like Nutritrol, along acting alpha lipoic acid, Myco D2, cell detox, assess yeah. acetyl glutathione, oh, Nutri Defense, which I designed that will chelate out the heavy metals and isotopes. If you don't take these now, these bioaccumulated isotopes will kill you, and before they kill you, they're going to hurt. They're going to give you cancer, dementia, heart disease, arrhythmias, many other problems, infertility, birth defects, brain IQ damage, peripheral neuropathy, every illness you can imagine will happen. Dr. Uh, Teresa Pentanella uh, and Ann Morrison, of course, we're also joined by Robert Felix. Welcome to the program, Robert. Thank you, Dr. Deagle. I'm glad to be here. Now, we have Teresa is our expert on radiation. She's written a book, and I want you to repeat the title. And, of course, you have a website, too, Teresa, so people can obtain your book. It's called? It's called America's Chernobyl, Millions Will Die. The right. website is triple W, of course, rad, R-A-D, detox, D-E-T-O-X, dot com. Yeah. It's R-A-D, D-E-T-O-X, dot com. And I would encourage everyone to go right to Chapter 9, where I wrote about surviving a nuclear attack, as well as nuclear power plant meltdowns. Right. Now, and we already had a, a, if you want to call it, a station blackout-induced uh, radiation surge from San Onofre. That's long gone now. It's shut down. It's probably never get back up again, thank God. But the radiation level from Fukushima is, on average... And it's not just hitting California. A lot of people get arrogant. Oh, you poor people on the West Coast. Oh, my gosh, it's so bad. No, no, no. Radiation whips right past us, hits the mountains. It may be worse in Croatia than it is here in the West Coast. So people assume that it's just going to drop because of the nearest prior piece of land it hits. Uh-uh. It could be uh, at 7,000 feet, and it may not happen until it rains down over Missouri or uh, the coast of England. 